thing I use. Oh. Look at that one right there. I don't know. Hey guys, we're filming, man. Oh, oh hey, 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 sorry. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> This video is brought to you by Sportsman's Guide, your one-stop shop for all your outdoor needs. Check them out at www.sportsmansguide.com. Howdy folks, welcome to their video here at Ordnance Lab. We're here with the guys from DNS Creations. You want to introduce you yourselves? Steve. Dan. Yeah, and what they've done is they've got themselves a direct fire rocket. We've done indirect fire stuff where we're like Werner Von Braun who Aim for the stars, but he always hit London in the process. But these right here were gonna be different than that. They're, as I said, our previous ones were indirect. These will be direct fire, kind of like a AT4, I guess. Pretty much. And so talk about y'all's launcher here. So what we got here is the PT4. It's basically just a, this is a smaller version of what we're gonna be launching earlier or later. Um, it shoots a 60 millimeter projectile and it's rocket propelled and propelled by methanol blast from behind it. So, so how does the rocket itself work? So what we do is we have a uh, switch hooked up in here that's uh, connected to a battery that uh, uh, basically sends the electrical charge to the igniter, lights the rocket off. Um, as a rocket engine starts to light, it'll uh, ignite the charge that we have in the combustion chamber, pushing the rocket out approximately, probably 15 to 20 feet out of the muzzle before the rocket engine actually takes off and sends the rocket into flight. So it actually has the soft launch. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a very so soft no back launch. blast. Correct, exactly. Okay. And you also mentioned that you had the rifle, the barrel rifled actually. How did you do that again? Oh yeah, I made a little button, rifle button out of a piece of wood and a drill bit. We just basically uh, clocked it and uh, at every 90 degrees and pulled it through the barrel. The barrel is just PVC. This is our pretty crude rudimentary launcher compared to what you're gonna see later. Yeah, we got some great stuff coming up. So we'll move on to launching some rockets. Steve approached us a few months back to see if we could combine forces with him and Dan on their 3D printed rocket project. Seeing as we are all about 3D printed ordnance, how could we say no? It's kind of our thing ever since we made a 3D printed Claymore. First up is the rifled 50mm rocket launcher, a simple yet effective amalgam of PVC and metal. The projectile used by this beast are these creative little 3D printed 50mm rockets. Each one is fitted with a rocket motor, a small warhead of about 50 grams of explosive, and an impact fuse. We loaded up several to test out the effectiveness of this rocket launcher. Each launch requires a small amount of preparation. This is not a plug and play system as seen in military weapon systems. Once Steve and Dan got the rocket launcher ready, it was time to light it off. Good to fire. Miss the target. Just over the top, dude. Two, one. Oh, missed the target. Just good to fire. So the first right. shot was not so successful. Three, two, we can freeze the frame here and see the rocket flew just over the target. To fix this problem, we will put up a bigger target for the next launch. Then we can reset and rearm the rocket launcher. Well. That, like most things in my life, was disappointing. When it came out, it looks like it kind of disintegrated. And um, I guess that the rocket kept going on and the warhead just, just spilled out all over the ground. Yeah, there's a few pluses and a few minuses about 3D printing. You know, 3D printing, uh, it's really good for compressive forces, but that rocket could have had a fault in layer line or layer separation. The fortunate thing about it, though, is the uh, rocket, if it misses a target, it actually disarms itself because it disintegrates on impact on any off-angle impact. So that's actually good. We don't have to go search the uh, range for UXO. Okay, well, we'll recock and we'll try again. This time, Sean will do the honors and see if he can do a better job with all that mighty army training bestowed upon the Army Officer Corps. Let's hope his weapon use skills are better than his land navigation abilities. Awesome. So instead of third time's a charm, second time's a charm in this case. The rocket flew with a solid trajectory and hit the target resulting in a very nice blast.
Rewinding the video, you can just see the rocket here in mid-flight. A fraction of a second later, the rocket engine comes to life and propels the rocket onto the target. The flash powder charge produces a very bright and loud report which is always a crowd pleaser. The blast blew out one of the panels of the doors. Not too shabby for a prototype device. Well, that was pretty cool. Whenever we shot it off, um, I was like, oh crap, it actually works. So I haven't seen the video yet, but I'm sure my reaction's pretty funny. And it looks like it flew out here to about six feet away from the door before the rocket ignited and then hit right where Steve is. He's being very, <laughs> very, very handsome in that. Um, and so it hit right here and blew out the door. Well, we had a flash powder charge in that. And so it made a quite a theatrical explosion, it looked like. Yeah, yeah, it was quite impressive. Um, yeah, with the, uh, the, the engine, it, uh, the uncharacteristic of them to light that late, so that's uh, just probably something with the uh, with manufacturer. But yeah, it was about six feet before it actually impacted the door when the motor was really starting to come on power and push this thing pretty hard. Yeah, so that was pretty impressive. A uh, good way to burn off these hundred year old doors that have been sitting around in the ranch for a while since so we burned down an old house on here. So we'll go out there and we'll try it again. All right, guys, so the first round that we shot off had flash powder, and that was pretty theatrical. Flash powder is great for that sort of thing. Not very powerful in a sense of an explosive, but man, it produces an awesome flash, hence the term flash powder. <laughs> Go figure. So this one, we're gonna load it with a binary explosive. And the idea of this one is it should have more destructive force against the door. Hopefully, right, you know? So let's launch this off and see what happens. Let's do it. Let's yeah. go. My days as an anti-armor specialist are numbered, apparently. The rocket hit the ground before the rocket engine could ignite and keep the projectile flying. Fortunately, the warhead breaks apart when this occurs, preventing it from flying off with the rocket motor. Anyways, time for a second try. Oh. Unfortunately, second time's a charm was not in the cards today for me. Despite aiming higher to account for the drop, the rocket still plummeted and hit the ground early resulting in a runaway rocket motor. Oh no! Just a little low again. It still has forward momentum that strikes the target, but the fuse doesn't make contact. So, no explosion. This does make the rocket intrinsically safer, as it only detonates under certain conditions, which reduces a good deal of risk. The parts were recovered for a post-operational analysis so that Steve and Dan can collect data for improvements on the rocket system. That way we can work on a streamlined prototype with superior performance. As we always say, the difference between science and messing around is if you record it or not. Well, that rocket didn't go according to plan. It got a little bit of firecracker effect at the end. So we'll have to do some more uh, R&D on that. But what do we got here? So this right here is the uh, warhead component of a larger rocket we have. Like many things in life, if it's black, it might be a little bigger. <laughs> Who knows, that stuff can happen. <laughs> and so is it just gonna be like a regular HE warhead? No, this actually has a 3D printed copper liner. So basically what I mean by that is there is a plastic case where compressed copper powder is put in there and we've got a perfect uh, 60 degree cone made of copper powder. And that is hopefully gonna penetrate this steel plate. So we're gonna go for a shape charge effect, not, in a, not a high explosive anti-tank type of one. Yeah, that's right, we're gonna go for shape charge. All right, so what we'll do is we'll load this stuff up with Jake's Gemini and we'll see how it works for penetrating the steel right here. This is the warhead segment to a larger rocket that we will later see, so don't worry. What we want to see is how effective Steve's shape charge concept works. We calculated the standoff based on the shape charge cone size and placed it against this steel plate. You might recognize it as we have used it before in previous videos on shape charges. The warhead was placed on an undamaged spot on the plate and loaded with approximately 200 grams of Gemini liquid explosive. Let's ignite this little guy and see what it can do. Three, two, one, fire. So the blast was awesome as always. The thumpy feel from the Gemini going off is just amazing and brings a smile to all of us here at Ordnance Lab. The slow motion camera caught the non-L shockwave traveling down the tube and the resulting warhead detonating. 
Explosions occur at such a fast rate that even the thousands of frames a second the Kronos camera can operate at still isn't enough. So the blast was successful, but what about the shape charge effect? Well, it did create a shape charge effect. You can see here the copper did form a jet and attempted to penetrate the plate. It managed to get about 3 millimeters deep into the plate, which isn't bad, especially as this is a prototype design. So we have another one we're going to try out here, part de, as they'd say in French. And hopefully this right here will work again and we'll see what it does. The second warhead we set off with an electric blasting cap, but that is irrelevant. The detonation was successful and produced another awesome explosion. Seriously, they never get old. It's just an amazing adrenaline rush every single time. It's difficult to explain what an explosion feels like. The only way to truly get an idea of it is to experience it. All right, that one was actually pretty effective. It was even more effective than the other one. Of course, this right here is AR-500 steel that's what, three quarters of an inch thick. So it's not like we're gonna be getting these amazing effects we get from like a factory shaped charge. We're making a pretty good indentation on there, but you've done a great job, especially for a first time uh, shaped charge builder. Yeah, I'm pretty pleased, honestly. We've got a, basically where our liner was copper and it was uh, mesh copper, which means it was a finely ground powder. And for it to get this penetration on such a small volume of explosive, like 100 grams, that's actually pretty cool. Yeah, so, all right, we're gonna move on to bigger rockets now. All right, well, we're on to part two. So what do we have here for our rocket? So this is the one everybody's been waiting for. This is a 3D printed rocket. The top half is a resin print. The bottom half is an FDM print. We're trying different uh, methods, manufacturing methods, but basically this is a solid rocket motor rocket, uh, APCP. And in the back, we have a propelling charge that's supposed to boost it out of the tube, fire it recoilless style. And uh, in the top, in the warhead, um, we'll save that for later, but right now it's clay. Yeah, and so the previous one that we used, that right there used basically potato gun to get it out of the, uh, the uh, tube. This right here is gonna be different. Yeah, that's right. This is gonna use uh, a counter mass and black powder. Okay, it, so. so would that be similar to like what a javelin does? Uh, it's gonna be kind of like basically actually like what an RPG does. Okay, Yeah. all right. So what we're gonna do is we'll see how this one right here flies and see if it, well, if it flies or if it just spins out, um, we'll do some real legit scientific stuff. So let's get onto it. Voila, the piece de resistance. This is Steve's impressive clone of an AT-4 launcher. A sleek and clean build to launch his new prototype projectile, the 75mm rocket. This bad boy is a major upgrade from the 50mm rockets we tested earlier. It's equipped with a far larger rocket motor, an internal fusing mechanism, and a large 200 gram explosive payload. The whole system is designed to be operated just like an AT-4. For testing and safety reasons, we will be skipping the shoulder launch. The launcher was fixed to one of our older blast walls at an approximate 45 degree angle. This is simply to test the launcher's function and the flight path of the rocket. Since it's a dummy round and contains no explosive, we aren't worried about where it ends up. The estimated range of the rocket is way less than the length of the demolition range, so it will fall somewhere in the brush harmlessly. Well, that last launch was very nice, great success, it was, which is like some viewers don't even know what the hell that is, no. but um, <laughs> poor kids. But anyways, that went really well, like Wally E. Coyote with it flying off to the wild blue yonder. We'll probably never see it again. And we tried it now with a weight simulator, um, or as Jake would say, a simulacrum. And now we're going to move on to the actual explosives. So Y'all can talk about what we've got here. Yeah, so we uh, we felt good with how it flew, with just uh, clay in the front of it to act as a, as a dead weight to take up what the explosives would. Uh, so moving forward, put the explosives in here. Uh, we do have a few safety features, which is this paddle right here, which you can see. Uh, the way that this is designed is once it does actually leave the barrel, that this is gonna eject itself, which will arm the uh, the warhead when it's in flight. So we do have a multitude of safety things just to, make, to try to make this explosives as safe as we possibly can. Uh, we are also remote firing this, so we're far out of the way. So uh, if anything does bad does happen, we'll be a-okay.
All right, well, we'll see what happens. Time to test this rocket out now with a live warhead. This time we mounted the launcher in a wooden frame and aimed it against a large metal target. You might recognize this target as we used it to test out our shoe bomb. Definitely go check out that video if you haven't seen it. With the rocket launcher in place and aimed at an appropriate angle, we strapped it down to ensure it doesn't fly off. Steve and Dan then got to work getting it ready and loading the live warhead. This rocket has approximately 200 grams of flash powder, which will provide a very theatrical explosion and should put a decent dent in the target, assuming it hits the target. Well, it worked, sorta. The rocket did launch, but a post-launch analysis showed it did not achieve enough velocity to keep the rocket on its intended flight path. Instead, it dropped and hit the ground just short of the target. Despite this, the internal fuse system worked, resulting in an amazing blast. So it's not a total loss here. Well, that right there, I wouldn't say it was an unqualified success, but it was a success. We still got it to launch out of the tube, and it flew a little bit and it detonated. It didn't fly all the way to the target, but we still got everything that we were looking for except for that uh, impact into the target. Yeah. So we just got to work on getting the accuracy down. Yeah, uh, just work on the center of gravity and maybe some of the aerodynamics. Uh, all the safety devices worked. Um, everything worked as a uh, design. It just, uh, just a little bit of a dip out of the tube right there. So center of gravity issue maybe. Yeah, so we'll be doing some follow on stuff. So guys, thanks for coming out. Cool. Uh, for DNS Creations, make sure to check them out there on Facebook. We'll do a follow on with this and see what we can do to get these rockets going and we'll give Lockheed Martin a run for their money. Absolutely. So, all right, we'll see y'all next time.